talking to me about this Yugo while the lights are flashing. So the entire neighborhood thinks I'm getting arrested. The day I got it, I was working. I saw it on Craigslist and I went and bought it immediately. And like I said in the last video, it was either pay rent or get this Yugo. So I went, I met the guy, didn't drive it or anything, just said I want it. In Atlanta, I was in Grayson, which is about an hour from where I was living at the time, almost in Dawsonville. I bought it about four o'clock on like a Tuesday. So I mean, it was rush hour at the time. And immediately the temperature gauge just starts going up and up and up. I mean, it's in the red and I didn't know anything about the car. I didn't know if any of it worked. I mean, the speedo didn't work. The, you know, it doesn't have a tachometer, but none of the other gauges work. So I start going, start getting, start getting on the roads. And then it starts cutting off on me. I mean, I'm in rush hour 285 and everybody's honking at me. There's people that know what it is, obviously. And they're like, it's a Yugo, you expect this. But then there's the people, you know, are laying on the horn, shouting obscenities at me. The person that was driving my car home was my fiance's cousin who had never driven a car and who didn't have a driver's license. If he gets pulled over, you know, at least getting a heavy fine and, you know, I have to explain why I let this kid drive my car. Within 10 minutes of getting out on the road, people were stopping and taking pictures of it. I didn't know what the car was really when I bought it, but at that moment I knew that I wanted it for like ever. And it has a permanent space in my garage. I'm never selling it. I'm never getting rid of it. It's my favorite car of all time. Turned off onto my exit and I see blue lights behind me. And I'm like, come on, man. I just, I, I'm, I'm literally a mile away from home at this point. And he pulls me over and says, I ran the tags. This doesn't have insurance on it. And also I just wanted to see a Yugo. He's like, you cut off the car. And I said, sir, I, I know for a fact it won't start if I cut it, if I cut it off. Can you follow me home? Um, he's like, how far away do you live? I said a mile, a mile and a half. We go home and he, and he proceeds to sit outside my house for about 15 minutes talking to me about this Yugo while the lights are flashing. So the entire neighborhood thinks I'm getting arrested. It ended up, you know, since then I've gotten pulled over four times with cops just wanting to see the Yugo, not realizing that I may be in a hurry and that I daily drive it occasionally. I'm not just out for a leisurely stroll. A lot of people will say, is that the car from Doug DeMuro's video? Is that the car from Tavares' video? Is that a Yugo? I haven't seen them since, insert, you know, 1986 when they first started selling and then when they immediately all broke. About a week later, I sent an email to Doug DeMuro and said, I got this, do you know anything about him? Because at the time I knew nothing about him. I knew it was weird and I knew I wanted it. It was my first play car that I bought. And he emailed back and said, no, I don't know anything about them, but I'm going to be down in Atlanta at some point. Can I drive it? So I immediately emailed back, yes, you know, of course. And then I realized my car was in no shape to be driven by Doug DeMuro. Being that I didn't have any money, I, immediately, I just started doing everything I could as cheaply as possible to this $1,000 Yugo. Fast forward a couple months, he emails me and says, hey, I'm gonna be down in a month. Can you meet on a Saturday or something? You know, on this Saturday, I'm gonna be there. Can you, can you meet and we can film a video? And I didn't know what I had scheduled, but it didn't matter. I said, sure, you know, as anybody probably would with a Yugo and, you know, a broke kid right out of high school. The day before he came, I was at work and I ordered some Chinese food. Really, really sketchy Chinese food. I never had food poisoning before, but I, I definitely had it that night. He was supposed to meet me at like nine, 10 o'clock. He gives me a call and at the time he's calling, I'm on my hands and knees in front of the, in front of the bathroom. Like, so he calls me like three times. He's, I, I can see him out the window. Like there's a toilet here and then I look up directly out into my front yard and I see him in a rental car, a Jaguar. And he, he's calling me and calling me because I mean, obviously, I mean, he can see the Yugo is sitting there, but he just didn't, you know, I wasn't answering the phone. So finally I call him like, hey man, I'm sorry, I was in the restroom. And we, he asked for someplace quiet to film. So I take him to, in the neighborhood, we have this little parking lot area and it's, you know, it's by the pool, it's October, November, so no one's using it. He then says, all right, I wanna do an interview with you. 
So he starts talking to me, and the whole time, I mean, it's, it's right here. It's this close to just ruining his entire day. So he's trashing it. He's going through every single detail, looking at it like, this is crap, this is crap, this, everything's bad. And then we get in the car, and he takes, he, we start going, there's a traffic circle around about right, right around where I lived. He goes around it, and he starts, and he notices the body roll that, I mean, there's just an obscene amount of body roll in it. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat, still sick. When he starts doing that, when he noticed it, he then continued to do it for about 30 more seconds. And I'm just getting more and more sick. So then we stop and he goes to do his little drive-bys, you know, and you know, he sets up the tripod, does the drive-by. When he's doing that, I'm in, I'm in the woods. I, I was fine until we got back and he went to do like the closing segment, you know, the, the roundup of the Yugo, how bad it actually was. And during, while he was doing that, I again ran to the woods. So I think I'm maybe the only person to throw up twice while filming with Doug DeMuro. I mean, not many people can say they filmed with Doug DeMuro because he gets most of his cars from dealerships now. It might be his most disliked video, but his video has about 1.4 million views and that's a fairly good video for him. But the likes and dislikes are where it gets really bad. It has about 15,000 likes and about 6,000 dislikes. And in comparison, his usual videos get about 100 to 200 dislikes. So that shows everybody, I'm guessing in that part of the world, hated the video. Because every video I make on my Yugo, immediately the, I mean, former Yugoslavians just descend on it, critiquing everything, telling me how Yugo is the best car. There is no other car other than the Yugo. So in lieu of paying my rent, I bought the Yugo for about $1,000. People, every time I take it to Cafe and Octane, they offer me four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 for it. But even then, every video, I mean, in Doug's video, in Tavares' video, in my videos, everybody that, everybody that sees it from former Yugoslavia, Serbia, Macedonia, those places, they say that I vastly overpaid, that every, that a Yugo, you can get a pristine Yugo, I mean, a modified engine swapped rally Yugo for $150 and, you know, it's, I don't think I overpaid considering there's maybe, to my best guess is 750 to 1500 left in the United States. I mean, we don't have a good way to keep track of it but there's no owner's club for them. There's no forums for them. There's no support for them. If you have a Yugo or if you see a Yugo, post them to VinWiki so we can figure out how many are still left because it's really interesting to me and I'm sure Ed would love to know.